kids in the kitchen cooking is pretty awesome. But take that experience outside, get their hands in the soil, where they can grow their own fruits and veggies, amazing. Something about growing your own food is so rewarding for kids and adults. For kids, it's super fun to get them, get them messy, get in the soil. It also teaches them responsibility and it teaches them a lot about where our food comes from. More importantly, it gives them a stake in the game as far as making their healthy choices because I guarantee you, if they're growing it, they're more inclined to try it. I'm at Rose Hill Plannery in Newcastle, Delaware, which has been in business for over 100 years. They have over 30 different varieties of tomatoes and over 40 different varieties of peppers, just to name a few things that you can get here. They were voted Best of Delaware for Garden Centers Upstate, and I'm super excited to check out their selection for my veggie garden. Let's go shopping. for my veggie garden. I am planting several varieties of tomatoes, some peppers, some fresh herbs, and I have some seeds and I'm gonna to plant to grow some leafy greens. All of these will be perfect to recreate the dish we'll be preparing on today's episode. Speaking of today's show, my guests love gardening just as much as I do. It's kind of a mother-son bonding experience to get in their veggie garden together. So they'll be joining me to prepare their recipe for garlic and oil spaghetti with the addition of several fresh veggies and herbs, all of which you can harvest right in your backyard. But it doesn't stop there. We are gonna transform that delicious dish into a nutritious and delicious frittata with the simple addition of eggs, milk, and cheese. I'm super pumped to see dinner turn breakfast on this episode of the Red Clay Cook-Off Family Style. Today's episode is all about Sunday morning brunch in your PJs with Kara and Joseph Villanelli, who will be joining me on the set to prepare their family tradition recipe for frittata, which combines leftover pasta and veggies and lots of garlic with eggs and cheese baked to perfection to eat in the morning, and it is so good. After meeting with them though, their passion for food and cooking was more than just their frittata. So we're also going to showcase their grandmother's, Kara's grandmother's recipe for homemade pasta, which I'm super pumped to make here today. So let's get them out here and get this show started. Come on out. Hi. What you got there? A strainer. And what is this for? This is a really like, good strainer. <clears throat> if you have liquid in something and you want to get the liquid out, then you pour like whatever you have in it and then it will pour the liquid oh. out through the bottom. And today we're using this for? To sift the flour. Right, perfect. So, so what are we making here today, Joseph? We're making frittata. Frittata, and we're also gonna make your grandmother's homemade recipe, which I love the authentic recipe book that you brought. <laughs> if you could hold that up for the camera. Sure. I mean, how? So, how? <laughs> It's well, it's well worn. It is, it's, it's, you know what, this is a family tradition recipe book if I've ever seen one. Look yeah. at that. I've never seen that before. Actually, yes. <laughs> it's because uh, she has it all up here. She's it's a got, bunch it's of got a recipe for like uh, all these Italian things and we've cooked a lot of them, but my dad, like we would make a lot of like ravioli and stuff. Um, and he's made all kinds of notes like all throughout here. So it's kind of like a nice That's little awesome. keepsake. And check it out. Just like little, little notes in there. Just as you guys move along, you've modified the recipe. Yes. So, you know. Mom has a lot of cookbooks at home. That's cool. I think this one's my favorite. I'm just, I'm just gonna go with that. And tell me, um, we, with the strainer we're gonna use to sift the flour, what's, with, yes. what's the deal with this big board that you um, brought with you today? I, this is where we like roll out the stuff yes. to make the well the... when we started getting into making pasta at home my dad was like you need a huge board and we didn't really have like our counter is not that big and a friend of his made this um for him and the way that my grandmother and aunt would make it was like no machine we use the machine but like we're they, going old school today they would um wrap it it, like the dough starts in a small little ball and they would wrap it around this dowel and stretch it and before you know it like the the dough is like as big as the board 
How about we get started with the pasta? I am going to, you want to, are you going to stay, you're going to work the center, the pasta? Sure. The pasta okay. board here. So, so we've got flour. So you go with, um, you said you went with all purpose flour, which my little chicken. Yes. Yeah, so we make this, um, it's kind of like a, I guess a eggy. Kind of like an egg noodle, kind egg noodle. Yeah, like an egg noodle. Italian traditions, um, a lot of Italian pastas use semolina flour. So I brought some of that, and it's a little bit coarser of a texture. Yes. Um, so a lot of recipes will use 50% um, all-purpose and 50% yes. semolina or whatever blend they, they, they like. And that's made from a durum wheat flour, which has a lot more gluten than all-purpose. So today we're using all-purpose for our purpose. Um, but you could also use some semolina as well. Um, and, and that is um, traditional in a lot of Italian pastas. And apparently it makes the dough chewier and makes it stretch a little bit more. So why don't you go ahead and get started? Okay. And we'll get rocking and rolling. The other ingredients we have today, um, we have low fat milk, um, which we've just poured in a pitcher. And then we've got an assortment of, of eggs. Are you looking for you the one like cup? a little knife or something? Leveling. I like that. Yeah. There you go. So um, my grandmother would actually just dump the flour, a That's bunch of flour into like the sifter, and so like we never really knew measurement, like how much. And so we're doing trial and error right now. Like so, I mean, I I've done that. This dough is very forgiving. So you, That's put, good. Just keep dumping so it. So it's hard to mess up. It, so it try it. All just keep putting it in there. So we know that's half a cup. So. When I talked to Kara about making the homemade pasta, she's, you were saying that you don't really have a specific recipe. She was like, I just know the mound to make because you've made it so many times. Yeah. And with, with flour um, in general, when you are measuring, more in particular and with baking, yeah. you don't want to pack the flour in. You want to you level it because with baking, not so much pasta, like she was saying, I think pasta is a little more forgiving, especially this recipe. But when you're baking, you don't want to pack the flour in because then it makes it more dense and therefore your cake would be more dense. Um, so you just want to level it off. Yeah, and we do make a lot of cakes, and so that's like a totally different, what was that, too? Yeah. Different ball game. Oh, man. Although she like, makes really I good I sift it like three times, and it's yes. like you better have that, it better be like correct. This Perfect is like, texture. yeah, if we packed this in a little bit, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even matter. Okay, yeah. so that, that was, I think that was <laughs> that three, was six, right? Yeah, yeah, that was six total. Yeah. We practically use like all of it. It's okay, we've got more. And look at this, you can just make a mess out here, it doesn't and even matter. And yeah, we actually need, like this here, we because we, we actually eventually will need to flour the surface. Flour it, yeah. And this is great, easy cleanup. Um, just take it outside and hose it down, really you could, right? <laughs> and the sifting really separates the flour. It's, it's like we were saying, particularly important with baking, but um, this really separates the flour and makes can it I nice and fluffy. Yeah, just shake, 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 shake it. it. Just shake it. Shake it, Try Joey. to keep it in like one spot. I'm going to like hit it. And you almost make, um, I'm so excited to see it come together because it almost looks like a little volcano when it all, when it all is ready to Yeah, so to this mixing. like, a lot of people call it like the well method. Yeah. So you just, you know, make a hole in the middle of it. At our house, we have like a, like a strainer machine, like there's this little cup and then you sip. We also went to this, when we were traveling one time, we went to this aunt, to this antique shop, we got this cabinet and it had like oh, a... Oh yeah. yeah, I got a, an old like baking cabinet. Like and a, it was, had, had a one of those hutch machine. ones. Yeah, I forget what they're called. Anyway, I had to have one that had the... Sifting thing? It has like the thing, it like stores flour in it and it has its own sifter. Oh, yeah. And then you can Fancy. just put it in a cup and then dump it wherever you want. That's pretty cool. So I think our little recipe book says two, two eggs, eggs, but I always like... Yeah, I think I always do three. Three? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and crack the eggs. And I personally like to crack the eggs into a different bowl first and, and you know, no yeah. extra eggshells in there. So we're doing that. Can I pour the eggs in? Of course, buddy. Come on over. Yeah. Just and the right eggs we're working with today um, are an assortment of, of a bunch of different eggs. We have pink, white, brown. We've got speckled, blue um, from my fresh chickens. So not my fresh chickens, fresh eggs from my chickens. One time we went to the store to get a thing of eggs mm -hmm. and I think they were goose eggs, right? Oh yeah, we got, and we got a blue yeah, we got egg. egg. We got yeah. a blue egg. It's a blue one, yeah. There's all different, and every, the chickens have, like this one's called, they call this chicken, they call her an Americana or an Easter egger. I forgot to put the salt in, oh, in the that's flour. Right. Over there. That's because we're chit-chatting and having fun. This really takes it back to, you know, you don't necessarily need fancy equipment to make homemade pasta or 
a lot of dishes in general. I mean, think about it. This is the tradition of making pasta in everywhere, and it's particularly in Italy is, is goodness, gone on forever. So um, they did it without all this fancy equipment. It just makes it a lot easier for I've, time saving. I've been putting, uh, this is pretty coarse, this, this pepper. Yes. But I have been putting, lately, I've been putting, um, experimenting with like just putting pepper right in it and it gives it like a oh. different like just the texture and the color and so what do you do next do you okay. have, your, you like, have your little mountain yeah you, I like, which looks so super cute I like so you basically like good. whisk you, you take a just take a fork and like whisk joey you want to take the honest sure you gotta, i like, like this part because it looks like a egg volcano it does look like yeah. an egg volcano that was my thought exactly yeah so the first thing you want to do here. is just like you're beating the eggs then right. you kind of slowly start ah explosion. Yeah, it can like really you can like lose it, so you kind of like ah. sort of start to like pull in a little bit from the side, and then oh, you just that kind makes of a keep lot like of sense. Yeah, let me see. You kind of keep stirring it, and then like it gets like okay. a little bit thick, and you really just every now once in a while, like you want to so spread fun. out this circle. Now it's starting to smell like the pasta. That's what happens when and you then mix it. Once this gets going a little bit, then like I just gradually add, add the, milk. Can I do the it? milk. Like, and this dish, um, like we're going to turn it into pasta today because we're going to make the pasta with the veggies. But you could, you could uh, roll it out flat. You could do raviolis. You could do lasagna. You could do yeah. That's our like that's our specialty. It's a ravioli. Yeah. Anything that's like a kind of like noodle or something. Uh, eventually, like when it starts getting like. A big eggs look a lot different. Yeah, then you can kind of start like just pulling around. You can eventually get rid of your fork, and then you just start like kind of adding the milk. Yeah. So just, so just kind gradually, of, like you're not even putting all of that in there. Like just, you just pour kind it of like out. put it in the middle. And, and that's, like, this is another reason why the um, oh. gradually. There you go. It's coming at you. <laughs> um, so that's why this recipe, like Kara, Kara was saying, really the measurements aren't as important as knowing what texture to achieve. So it's kind yeah. of just, you work through, you go. And usually um, like, I'm like, oh, this seems dry or this seems wet. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, I'll just put more. And even flour. when you add, even when you read a pasta, like a legit pasta recipe that's all written out, it always says if the texture isn't right, add a little yep. bit more flour, knead it in. And you really incorporate a lot of flour even when you go to the kneading process. Yeah, because you're you actually, flour. that's when you're adding more of it. Yep. Yeah, because you really flour the board a lot. So it's gonna pick up a lot of that flour as it's cooking. So this is where the process really comes in. You can see it requires a lot of tricep movement. <laughs> and then <laughs> really get in there. When this is made, like all this looks like a mess, but it will it will come together. Yeah, it, if if we, we were going, you can put like some flour, some flour like, absolutely off to the side. Then I can just pull it in, if, like however much we need. I mean, how much fun would this be for for kids to make pasta? Because it really is like you're playing with slime or play doh. Um, you really can get in there and just really have a good time with it. And I think like you and said, you, can't like, overwork you know, it. people. Are like whoa, making making, making pasta, pasta? Yeah, from like, scratch. But it's so it's like so easy to do. Like I mean, you can literally and it feels do it so on good. a weeknight. It feels so good. It's I like, mean, you could have a YouTube channel. Oh. You do this, right? Like, who needs there slime? You yeah, you, don't, you don't can't eat slime. slime. You don't eat slime, right? <laughs> I definitely eat slime. <laughs> I hope you don't. So if it's sticky, then you're like, that's how you know. Like, just roll over. And she's feeling the texture, noticing it's too sticky, and then she's incorporating the extra flour. That you, really, when you're doing pasta, if you have some extra flour on the outside, you can kind of pick it up as you roll it and pull it in. So we're going to let it rest for a little bit. So the reason you let it rest is not because it's tired. Um, after that job, it might be, though. Um, really, the reason you let pasta rest is because it helps the glutens form, and it helps create that chewy texture. So the glutens form makes it more, more um, chewy when the pasta is ready to cook. So we're going to yeah. let these glutens form, clean up this mess, and let you wash your hands. When you come back, when we come back, we are going to run this through pasta through the next stages and turn it into beautiful strands. Yeah. 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 Sam, Elmo. Oh, hey, Julia. Are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm-hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org.
It's time for the Red Clay Nutrition Trivia Challenge. Here's your question. Why is it important to let pasta dough rest? A. To dry out the dough to make it easier to work with. B. Because it needs its beauty sleep. C. To hydrate the flour and relax the glutens. Or D. To achieve a flaky texture. While B is somewhat true in that a well-rested dough does turn out to be a more beautiful dough, the more accurate answer is C, to hydrate the flour and relax the glutens. By letting the pasta dough rest, it relaxes the gluten, giving it time to stretch out. As a result, the dough will be easier to work with. After all, it is relaxed now, and you will achieve a stronger, more pliable dough that results in perfect pasta strands. Now, back to the show. All right, I think the pasta is rested. Let's check on it. Had a good sleep. Sleepy head. Can you check, see if he's awake? Sleepy head. You think it's awake? Mm. Wake it up. Wake up. I'll just check ah! it. Is it awake? Oh. I think it's awake. Well, it looks I like the, At I least like the peppery specks. Yes. I like, Look, feel, the, feel the difference in the texture. Feel I it like that it's less slimy. Yes. So, so it's now rested, well rested, it looks beautiful. So we are going to um, go ahead and transform this into pasta strands now. Let's so go it. ahead yeah. and do the next step. So you need a little bit of flour? We do, in and in fact it is, yeah. it, it's a, like, a little bit like humid actually in here. So we probably have to incorporate just a bit more flour. Yeah, it's a little bit like And goes back to sticky. your Mom flour has, measurements in this aren't as important as if you when you were in your baking baking. Mom has to cut it so it gets in there and That's then right. it can make the it smooth enough to make the yeah. pasta. So, so what this is, this this fancy little gadget over here, it's a KitchenAid stand mixer. Um, that a lot of people use for baking, but you can get certain attachments to it. Um, you can get a meat grinder, make your own ground meat. Um, you Do can you get a sausage one. Yes, the Isn't sausage stuffer. Fun? It's so much fun. This thing's like, it's a miracle worker. Today we have the pasta attachment. So the first, th the first step is the making of the sheets. So old school way, you would roll it out, um, really make the thin, the thin layer of pasta, and then you could cut it, um, which you still can do if you don't have one of these fancy machines. So usually I cut this into four pieces. And if it's not sticking to your tools, that's kind of a good sign. Good. Um, it can be like a little bit sticky, but you know. So we can just- Stick them right in there? Put them back. And you can actually just put the, whoa. What, the cloth a little back bit over? sticky. <laughs> So. so the wet cloth, we put the wet cloth over the dough and it just kind of keeps the moisture in there and helps it, um, you know, really activate the gluten. Once it's kind of like this, like I do, um, no matter what, like I do, you don't have to have this industrial I'm gonna move this hole, real quick. but you want to like kind of... it out before like you put it in? Yeah, you want to get it a little bit flat or it's not fitting in that. And, and sometimes they'll even break it. I break. almost broke the last time we tried this at our house. And just so you can see, now it's going to be sticky, but it really is a, a stretchy, stretchy dough. If you get it like this size, it's probably ready to go in. If you didn't have that, you would have to wrap it around your rolling pin. And it's, it's like very stretchy and you have really to pull it. stretch it, stretch almost it, stretch like, it. Almost the length of that? <laughs> Eventually it gets, yeah, it gets, if you don't have a, a pasta a thing, then you have to do that and you keep flipping it That over sounds like a process, on a pretty cool process. Yeah, it does kind of Very take, authentic, even the board, just I love the board. Time. So this, this particular attachment has varying degrees of thickness, so you actually can change it. So you always start on one, because yeah. um, otherwise it's, it's, it's gonna be too hard to work it through. So the, the first setting will make one sheet. Because it is a little like pesky when you're starting it. I'm gonna put some Whoa. little squeaky little bucket. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do that before. <laughs> so hopefully it's Is that a bumpy car right here? Hopefully it goes through. Um, hopefully no it's not too big. It's not. Look at that. I love the actual ground heart. Um, Don't firmer. you love the pepper in there? Yes, it looks pretty. Yeah. Can and then the next one? Pretty much. I just start like sprinkling flat because you don't want it sticky. That's yes. the last thing you want. And then it's gonna get stuck in there and it's gonna be crazy. So I just do like sprinkle flour and then go like this. So then you just now we're gonna put it on the Again. second setting. A lot of people that use this, they will fold it 
in the thirds. Okay. So. And that even brings the dough together a little more. Okay. I do that sometimes. I find that like every time I do that, it like makes it like mm -hmm. a little bit wide. I did not make that the thickness. It's still thin good. I didn't make yeah. it thin enough. It's amazing so, like, how didn't wanna, like, go it really there. does work that dough. We're just gonna work a smaller section right now. Um, get it, get it to the thickness that you need, and then when you cut it, um, it's really important when you are making pasta that you really, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have extra flour because you'll find you'll need it a lot. Um, so otherwise, the dough's not gonna, it's not gonna work. All right, there we go. Now Got it? I can tell we're back in business here. <laughs> this is what we're on the right track now. So just keep sprinkling the flour and just you go like that. Okay, so Joseph. Just be careful, you don't want to get any bends in it and wait for her to turn it on. Ready? Go ahead. I'm like, it's probably picking up a lot of noise. So we're going to go ahead and cut this now. Like I said, we have the linguine attachment on, the squeaking sound is gone. So you just run it through, and this beautiful machine takes the place Look at you want that. to go. There it did. Beautiful. Can I get that? Bella, Bella. Beautiful long strands of pasta are coming out of this machine. It's awesome. So you can see, let me just take one, they're nice and long. So you can see how beautiful, and then when you make it, it's really important to keep them separate. You'll see like a lot of pasta dryers. So we are going to let the magic of television make the rest of this pasta, and then we're gonna transform it into that dish. So magic of TV is gonna to go to work now. Well, through the magic of television, we have all these beautiful strands of pasta that are now ready for us. And while the magic of TV was working for us, it also helped saute some onions with a little bit of uh, minced garlic. And you want to saute them just until they're caramelized. And this is the first step and the crucial step to really bringing so much flavor to this pasta. And really a lot of dishes in general start with garlic and um, olive oil. And we also have a pot of water um, beginning to boil. So we can go ahead and I am going to start with the mushrooms and Joseph if you can here why don't you also prep some mushrooms and hand them over and Kara we're gonna cut the mushrooms for you and this dish um, you can also use to, to thicken the sauce what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna use a little bit of the pasta water because we're just gonna take the pasta directly out of the pot and the pasta water um, when you do that it brings some starchiness to the sauce and really helps hold everything yes, together exactly. nicely and coming at you. we're just going in with mushrooms and so far like I said we've got onion sauteing and we're gonna come in with all these veg vegetables. And this dish really pulls together really fast. And it's a great way to get a lot of vegetables in your diet as well, which is nice. Yeah. And olive oil, um, while it is high in calories, if you eat too much of it, it is a, an, an excellent uh, source of monounsaturated fats, which are really great for What's your, that? It's, there's good fats and bad fats. And the fat in olive oil, um, something like avocado, things of that nature, peanut butter, nuts, those are all healthy fats and they're good for our heart. Yeah. Um, and then next, um, we actually have some um, leftover asparagus from uh, the dinner the night before. So this is a great way to use extra vegetables. So we're just going to take these. Instead of throwing them away. Exactly. I mean, who would throw away these beautiful spears of asparagus? Me. And with asparagus, you want to hear? You can go ahead and move on to the asparagus if you want. Wait, asparagus works really nice. Off? You just cut them into little tiny pieces. Yeah, we're just gonna do cut it like it looks like green beans. Like. Yeah, we're gonna do a nice diagonal chop. And it looks really pretty when you do the, the diagonal piece. Um, it just, it makes it look really pretty. I like them like that. So this is just a great way. You could do broccoli in this. You could do anything you have. Whoopsies, asparagus down. I hate asparagus. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, do you? And I'm throwing it in there. That's the, ev that's the only thing I don't like. And we're actually going in with both um, the yellow gold tomatoes and some red tomatoes. You could use uh, I like the gold larger ones. tomatoes and dice them, but the, these work really beautiful in the frittata um, and yeah. also this dish and the pop. I feel like the cherry yeah. tomatoes just give you like that. You bite into them. And yeah, they're, they're more year round. Food. Yes, so they are. Unless it's 100%. summertime. Let's add one That's more. That's a very good point. The cherry tomatoes. Yeah. Let's add one more. This little guy, garlic, um, packs so much flavor, but it also packs so much nutritional properties, lots of antioxidants, very good for your heart, um, keeps the vampires away, so it's you know, multi purpose. You never know. Just saying. I think we could kick out the vampire theory. Oh. <laughs> Eventually you go in with some fresh spinach, and we just have some already washed spinach leaves, which you could use kale, Swiss chard, 
All Any kind of, of leafy works. green? Yeah. Broccoli chicken rob. Chicken curry. Oh, broccoli rob. Chicken That's curry. My favorite. <laughs> Where did chicken curry come in when we're talking about leafy greens? I don't know. Oh, okay. And it's amazing how much greens cook down. We're not going to add all of that to this dish, but you could. Oh, I would. Yeah, yeah I know. Because you cook it down, and it's like, it's, what happened? It's, yeah, it cooks down to like nothing. So the flavors really in this really are the vegetables, and then when, when we eventually bring this all together, the pasta, the flavor from all the veggies, um, really, and the olive oil and the garlic, and then the cheese. Which I'm the, saving these. And the cheeses we're using today, um, Pecorino Romano, and we have uh, Locatelli. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of nutty flavor to these cheeses. So like you could use standard Parmesan, you, uh, mozzarella wouldn't work because it's gonna melt. You want like a harder cheese. Yeah. Um, but the flavor in these, in these two cheeses is powerful. And the good thing about homemade pasta is you really don't have to cook it that long. So we are gonna go in. Do you want, do you did just- Did you um, salt that? No, I did not. So in Italian, um, really, really common in Italian food is they always say you wanna make your pasta water into an ocean. Um, so really adding like a, a handful of kosher salt or other salt um, will add, they say it adds a lot of flavor to the pasta, which if you're watching your sodium intake, you can skip this step. If you're trying not to um, eat, consume a lot of salt in your diet, you oh, can stop. I love salt. salt. Made it really boring. There you go. And now we're roaring. <laughs> okay, don't, don't stab me with it, that. I don't know night. what it's doing. We're gonna go ahead and go in with it. I think it'll be fine. <gasps> it looks glorious. Glorious. So and should I just... Go, go ahead with the spinach, yeah. However much you want to go in with, and we'll I'm add the tomatoes. Put it all in. Okay. Is it? Am I done? So this is a lot of veggies, which I love veggies. I think when you're when you're really trying to watch what you're eating and eating healthy, not even just watch what you're eating, but really trying to develop a healthy diet. Making, I always say, making half of your plate vegetables at lunch and at dinner, not necessarily with breakfast, but I always make that my rule, like a good serving of veggies. Yeah. is a good way to just make a healthy lifestyle a simple lifestyle so you don't have to overthink it. So but once, I like, once like the it. spinach is like wilted, then Spicy you stuff. can just add the pasta in. Add it right in. And when we're going to add the pasta, we're just going to let it, we're going to incorporate the pasta into the veggies and then add some cheese to it, which I will grate some of this pre-grated. I'm just going to grate it right on here. And the, the little gadget I'm using is a microplaner, and this is great for various things. Can um, I do today. that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Why am I doing this? <laughs> Just kidding. I like messing with you. All right. So he's grating the cheese, the lacatelli. And these noodles with you, when you use the all-purpose flour, really are like a softer noodle consistency yeah, than... Do, yeah. do we have to um, do You're not going to get that like al dente. That's good right there. <gasps> can I do some more? You can do a little bit more, but don't do too much more because I need some for the frittata. Okay, sounds good. You can just pop it right here on the board. Um, so we're going to go in with some, some cheese. You can get the grated. I just We just got the, the shredded, but you can use any kind you want. Kara, do you mind if I pop some of this over yeah. the top? Joey, you want to put the cheese? Sure. Go in with a little bit. And how much cheese would you use? Would you use? I don't know. I get crazy with the cheese. Me too. Getting crazy with the cheese. Yeah. Get crazy with the cheese. I love cheese. I love cheese too. Just like olive oil, you don't want to overdo it because it does have a lot of calories as we're like dumping the whole thing, which is yeah. fine. This is like more flavor. Um, but cheese really is, it's, it's a healthy food. It does have a lot of calcium and vitamin D and such, but um, it also does cap, um, have a lot of calories and a little bit, little bit of cheese. So just make sure you have lots of veggies when you're eating cheese and olive oil. While she's pulling it together, and the cheese is a little melty. Where are the um, We're going to get the taste testers going. Wait, go I can be a taste before. tester? I'll just yeah. test the tomatoes. So the good. reason we're making so much of this dish is because, number one, we're hungry. But any leftovers you have when you make this, if you make a lot, you can use the leftovers, and we'll show you how after we taste this. We're going to show you how we can use the leftovers. So if you want to start plating up a little bit, we'll go ahead. Actually, why don't you pour it into the pan, okay. the yeah. pot so it looks beautiful. And you can see how much, um, how much water has been taken out of that pot. Do you want to, are you good with it? Yeah. Um, the pasta really absorbs so much of that water, and you can see the color of the um, pasta. Joey, if you can take that cheese right over the top, we the color is totally changed. You can see it's starchy. Mm, I like Just the feel pop of it right it. on top. I like the feel of it. It is fluffy. It's, it's, it's snow and cheese. Come on, give me Fit a up plate. some pasta. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll, I'll take Joey's asparagus if he doesn't want it. Oh, I want the asparagus. <laughs> oh, I like it. Grab a couple maters. Give me most of the so we're going to go ahead and plate this up and try this. There you go, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. You going to eat with your fingers or do you want a fork? Fork. Wow. It looks so cheesy. Don't forget me. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> so you can see the cheese really pull apart with this. Um, the cheese we went with is a little bit cheesier than if you just used a standard Pecorino Romano, I think, then. But this looks Yeah, amazing. the Parmesan has a little meltiness to it. Yeah. Let's try it. Oh, good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man. Hot. It's very hot. That is amazing. A little cherry tomato. When you bite into it, that's why they're so good, because they just like explode in your mouth, and I just flung stuff. We're going to keep eating this, but don't go anywhere, because when you come back, we are going to share a little surprise with you about what you do with this dish when you have leftovers, which there may or may not be any left. I'm not sure. So stay tuned. <laughs> Let's crack the real story behind the health profile of nature's multivitamin, the egg. Eggs are rich in a variety of vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, and quality proteins. They are an exquisite source of disease-fighting nutrients like lutein and zeaxanthin, which reduce the risk of macular degeneration, the leading cause of blindness in older adults. What's more, the choline content of eggs enhances brain development and memory. And the lutein helps protect against atherosclerosis, the disease that leads to most heart attacks. So there you have it. We've just cracked the real story behind why it is an excellent idea to include an egg a day in your daily diet. That's all, yolks. me up. I think if we use the leftovers from last night, the pasta, your recipe, I think I want you to show me how to make left, use the leftovers to make the frittata recipe you shared. How about that? Should we do that? Does that sound good? All right. So you go ahead and I'm, I guess you start with the eggs. I already have one egg cracked, um, so you can go ahead and crack the rest. How many eggs do we need? I don't know. How many eggs are we using? I'm like moving this bowl all over the place. Uh, I'm still groggy. I think maybe four or five. Would four or five? Be good. Well, I'm going to whisk it. So. You want to pop it? You know what? Trash can? Yes. Thank you. There you go. Do you want to put you those, those in there? You ate all those in there. Right yeah, I know, but I'm running out of room. <laughs> I gave her a baby bowl. And you can whisk that while she's cracking. Yep, you can just start whisking. She's going to crack an additional three. So a total of six eggs. And eggs are actually like a powerhouse food. Um, they got a bad rap for a while because people worried about the cholesterol and the egg yolk, but more and more studies show that it's not really so much the cholesterol you eat that impacts your blood level cholesterol, but it's more about the saturated fat and trans fat. So, yeah, so um, eggs are really healthy. They're kind of, they're also re often Just referred to as nature's, nature's miracle multivitamin. And we got the oven. What do you usually cook this at? 400? I actually, yeah, I cook it very, very high, um, but I just put the pasta, like, right Directly in the pan. Yeah, right go for it. Pan. Here you go. So, so we have a... Um, just put, like, salt and pepper in that. I am getting ready uh, some basil. I love the smell of basil. It just makes me smile. I'm not sure what I like better in the morning, the smell of basil or the smell of coffee. I think I'm going with coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So much for the egg machine. <laughs> She's still standing. <laughs> we move her aside. So you want to go in with the, we have a cast iron pan over there, and cast iron gets extremely hot, which works really well. It makes like a nice sear on the bottom. But the cast iron pan has been, is prepped with some, um, she's put some olive oil in there. You want to get a nice coat on it, because if you don't, the frittata will stick to the bottom. So yeah, I basically just make like a nice even layer. Can I do that job? Um, of the leftover pasta. And then, behind me. Um, I do like a lot of cheese, so. I don't. I put 
Gallon some more. cheese on the on the bottom layer and then more on the top. Okay. I don't like cheese. I don't like a lot of cheese. Oh, you don't? Because when I went to this pizza place once, my mom got extra cheese and I choked on it all. <laughs> and I was like, too cheesy? Yeah. There's such a thing, huh? So now you go in with the egg mixture that you made and you already yep. have some salt, pepper. I salt, pepper, and milk. Salt, yep. pepper, and a little bit of milk, which is common for quiche. Uh, quiche is a recipe that uses that. So, and the eggs just find every single little crevice between all the pasta um, and work their way all the way down to the pan. So Can I cut the I'm extremely food? excited for brunch. What do you, what's Can that? I cut some of that? Oh yes, of course. When, you, when you're chopping, you always want to kind of rock from the back. But don't watch your fingers. If you just want to leave it, you can just rock from the back. So we're chopping some fresh basil. We're going to pop this in the oven here. If you want to bring it back and pop it in, or I can grab it. You got it? Basil that's in a pot right now. So the frittata is going to bake at 400 for about 12 minutes. And it's going to get a nice golden brown sear on the bottom. And then it is time to enjoy that frittata for brunch. I'm so excited. So we're going to go ahead and make that golden brown deliciousness come together in the oven. Hot. Could you close that for me, Joseph? This pan, one thing about cast iron pans is they are very heavy. And they make the most beautiful sear, I feel like, on food. I'm gonna leave this here while you, in case okay. you need that while you're plating. Because it's extremely hot. So, and it smells glorious. It in looks here. I'm great. I'm so excited. Um, and we're just gonna take some fresh basil that we've cut. I'm gonna sprinkle it. Boop, 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 boop. Joey, you can do some if you want. And then do you wanna take a little bit more cheese? I guess. Me. And this really is, I can't stress enough how great this recipe is to utilize leftovers. I mean, don't just isolate this just to leftover pasta and veggies. You could do this with leftover taco meat and beans, throw some tomatoes in there, some corn and some eggs and milk. I mean, this is very versatile. You can use this in so many ways um, and any leftovers really um, would work for this. But this one I'm extremely excited to try. So plate me up a piece. Okay. Me too. And you cut it almost like a little a pizza pie. Yep. Well, that looks cute. Uh, Looks like I'm just gonna hold this one up so we can see a shot. I mean, it looks just, like pasta pie. I'm just gonna go sit by myself and just eat in a corner. Okay. Is that, do I, are you good if I go? Yeah. You got this? Can yeah. you clean up? No. I hate cleaning up. All right, I'm gonna say it's you. Yeah, like we don't it. clean. I'm really, hurry up, I can't. <laughs> I'm waiting for you just because I don't want to be rude, but you know how hard this is for me not to take a bite of this? And we also have some fresh fruit. We have some fresh sliced bananas to balance out the meal, which you could serve this with anything. Are we not waiting for her? I give you a fork this time? Yes, Look at thank me. you very much. Let's see how this is. Ooh, the sign's hot, see that smoke. Oh, it's hot. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. The texture of the homemade pasta in here, because I've made it with the other pasta, it's, it's also great that way. But the texture of the pasta, that homemade pasta is really soft and so good with the eggs. Great, great compliment to this. We're gonna keep eating. Don't forget to make this dish at home using your leftovers. And remember, you're not cooking in style unless you're cooking family, family, family style. style. Hey Red Clay, could you tell me what state or country your produce is from at home? Here at Red Clay, we have a large amount of our produce from right here in Delaware. During harvest season, we feature local items such as watermelon, corn, tomatoes, peaches, and much more. We know how important it is to provide local produce so our students have nutrient-rich foods while we bolster our local economy. This back-to-school season, certain schools you won't have to look any further than out your own window for locally grown produce. Through a partnership with the District Wellness Committee and the Nutrition Services Department, more schools will be supported in their school garden efforts to provide a unique learning opportunity while serving delicious produce right in our cafeterias. But don't take my word for it. Check out the harvest in our cafe this fall. Hey, Cook-Off fans, it's your host, Jessica Terranova. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, make sure to click the thumbs up below. And for notifications when we post new episodes, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.